what's really wrong. Believe me, Mom, what you did was enough oh, to really what, set me what, off. Jane, I Mama! Carla said I... She said I never loved her. And what did you say? Well, what would I say? It wasn't true. I mean, how could she say that? It's, it's not true, Mom. Russ, what am I going to do? I can't let Cohen hear me like this. Well, don't talk. Maybe you won't notice. Why can't you be supportive? How come it's always wise cracks with you? Hey, you want to take it easy, huh? Just trying to relax you. Yeah? Well, it didn't work. Let me throw these out. Yes, ma'am. Anything else, ma'am? Roz, come back. Becky! corn has got too much invested to dump you. Right. If he doesn't use me for a singer, I can always do dog food commercials. He's not going to treat you the way that he treated Summerwind. Or was it you that treated Summerwind that way? Did you, um, get that bottle of wine when you went out yesterday? Yeah, what really happened? It's a long story. What kind of wine did you get? Forget about the wine. What happened with the band? Nothing happened. It was just it was a decision from higher up. Hmm. That's not the impression that Phil had. Oh? Yeah, oh. Well, what Phil thinks is his decision. And what you did is yours. <laughs> what are you and Phil all of a sudden bosom buddies or something? I Russ, I didn't do anything to dump Phil or Summer Wind, okay? Now, can we please change the subject? <laughs> you all right? Yes. That's Cohen. What are we going to do? Well, for starters, you can relax. Hi! Becky. Ready to make magic, baby? <laughs> hey, listen, Dave, how would you like a glass of wine there? Great. Throw a little soda in that for me. How's your voice, Angel? Are you hungry? I'm sure Becky can make you something. Yeah. How about making me happy? Tell me your voice is okay. It's fine. Mmm, very funny. Notice how I'm not laughing. I'm sorry. You said you went to a doctor. She did. She's much better. This is better? She sounds like Joe Cocker with a head cold. Come on now, Dave. Uh... Give it a little bit of time, okay? He said it would take a while. And it's been a while. Who is this quack? He's a good doctor. Oh, yeah, I could tell just by listening to you. Ease up a little bit. He did the best that he could, okay? What do you think, you're dealing with an amateur? There's ways to treat this sort of thing. I want to know why they haven't been done. Who is this so-called doctor? Where can I find him? You always did that. That's right, and you don't like it. No, leave it there. It reminds me that you're back. Well, be silly. Where's my purse? I need to get some aspirin. I think you put it back on the couch. Are you all right? Yeah, just a little headache. Oh, Carla, how can you do that? Expediency. Come on, why don't you let me rub your back? No, no, I don't think Come so. Come on. It's always worked before. Come on. Just for a minute. I mean, now who could do this better than me anyway, huh? Hey, uh... Carla, you did miss us, didn't you? I came back. For Jimmy. What about me? You're my husband. Well, that doesn't have to mean anything. Not if you don't want it to, anyway. Well, maybe I came back just to see if it did. So have you? I don't know. I know what it used to mean. And I also know because of who I am now, it could never mean that again. Which is? You as the dominant patriarch with the final word on every matter. Yeah, I know I've made a lot of mistakes before, but you know when you left that life wasn't going to be easy. You knew that you were going to have to play a lot of dives and take a lot of risks just for that one in a million chance that you'd make it. Now, knowing that, that it would be dehumanizing, demoralizing, demeaning, I mean, was it better than the life that we had together? Yes. Why? 
because I couldn't stand my doubts anymore. Jean, wanting that chance was the only gift that I thought you would understand. You never tried to give me any other one, oh, Carla. Yes, I did many times. When I'm in front of an audience, I feel their attention. I feel their acceptance. It's all for me. I feel their love. Mm. Are you saying that you didn't get enough of that from me, Carla? That's something I never got enough of anywhere. Not my daddy because he left us, and not my mama because she never had the time, and no, Jean. That's something I'm not sure I ever got enough of from you. Who's Franklin? I asked you to mail it for me, not read it. I'll do it myself. I didn't mean to cry. It's just a boyfriend. Well, I think it's very nice that you, that you keep in touch. You must be very special. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to mail it for you. It's the only guy I ever knew that, that wasn't a goon. Here. Does he uh, ever write you back? Yeah, he did once. Well, he's real busy. Oh, I'm sure. Actually, he's the only boyfriend I ever had. I bet you had a lot. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I guess a few. Most of the boys I knew were goons, too. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I, I remember this one guy who asked me out to lunch. <laughs> well, first he, uh, he asked me to drive. And then, in the middle of the meal, he asked me if I had enough money to pay for myself. <laughs> Sounds like a real winner. What'd you do? I uh, excused myself and went to the ladies' room and uh, went home. <laughs> oh, way to go! <laughs> you know, uh, maybe you'd have more success with boys if you were a little... Oh, if you just fixed yourself up a little more. There's nothing wrong with me. Well, no, I, I didn't mean... That. I know what you mean. You mean I'm not pretty enough for boys to take a second look at. No, Jill. I think you're very pretty. Don't talk to me like that. That's the same tone you used when you brought me home from the hospital, and I don't need anyone to feel sorry for me. Jill, you just expressed a concern, and, and I thought I could help you. What concern? That you didn't have any boyfriends. I didn't say that. Well, not directly, but, Jill, it obviously upsets you. I'm glad I don't have any boyfriends. They only want one thing anyway. I bet you don't think it goes like that, though. I meet Mr. Wright, I hold hands with Mr. Wright, I marry Mr. Wright. And there when we move to AOKville and we raise little Ronnie and Ramona Wright. Well, that's a crock, Mrs. Cummings. You did it that way and it's a crock. Let me tell you. And I like me the way I am. Jill, we accept you the way you are and so does the Lord. Well, he's the big test, isn't he? Well, I'm glad I passed that one. Does he accept the way you are, or do you have to put on your makeup and do your hair first? Jill, you know that's not important. I do, but you don't. You're all surface and glamour and about as real as a homecoming queen smile. You know, you are the homecoming queen. Jill, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid that if you stop playing Jimmy Cagney and try to become the homecoming queen that you won't be able to do it? That's what you really want, isn't it? Drop dead. I want you to quit treat me like I'm contaminated and give me the lowdown on Becky. I don't see how this is really any of your business. I'm her manager. That makes it more my business than yours. Does Mrs. Weaver know you're here? Yes. You gonna try and prove me a liar? That won't be necessary. I examined the patient yesterday. She has some minor throat irritation. I prescribed an antiseptic. Rinse and rest. Do they take throat cultures in this part of the country? All negative. Go on. That's it. The girl sounds like she's had her tonsils ripped out. And she'll continue to sound that way until she rests her voice. Why don't you recommend a specialist? Because I didn't feel one was needed. Yeah, well, I do. Fine, bring him in. He'll tell you the same thing I did. You've told me nothing. It's not a complicated case. 
You know, I don't think you understand how important this girl is to me. Contracts have been signed, dates have been set, studios have been rented, all of this done, of course, on the small assumption that my singer would indeed be able to sing. When she couldn't, she came to you. All you did for her was make her breath smell better, tell her to take a nap. Try and remember that Becky is a human being. Good day, Mr. Cohen. Are you saying I never loved you? Did you? Yes. How? Just by saying it doesn't make it true. By being there, taking care of you, and wanting you. I know you wanted me, but what for? You know, when I'd lie in your arms, I'd honestly think it didn't make any difference whether it was me or somebody else, just as long as it was somebody. Carla, that's not true, and you know that. Uh, no, no, I don't know that. Okay, so why didn't you ever say anything? I did. But you didn't listen, and then if you didn't or you didn't want to, I don't know, maybe I was afraid, but... Then I thought that if I would just, I just kept quiet, I could pretend that everything was all right. Carla, you never had to pretend to anything. Oh, yes, I did, Jean. Every time you called and said you weren't coming home from dinner, I had to pretend it. And every time you said that we had to move to another location because there was a better job someplace else, I had to pretend. So you think just because I came home late for work or that I, that I moved, that it was all just because of me? I mean, I had to become a success fast, Carla, so we could have some sort of security. When would it have stopped, Jean? You got your anchor job at WRD. Remember, Jean, I saw less of you then than ever before. Now, when did you plan on starting to fit me into your life? Okay, I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry that you didn't have the time with me that you wanted. But there were compensations, Carla. I was moving up that ladder fast, faster than anyone else. And don't tell me that you didn't enjoy the benefits. Come on. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Jean. You bought me off with those benefits. A new car for instead of evenings alone. A, a great wardrobe instead of you by my side when I needed you the most. Okay, so just when things start settling down, you up and leave, is that it? Settling down? The week I left, you sent your resume tape to the affiliate in Chicago, and then it would have been L.A., and then New York, and I don't know. Maybe I could have handled that, but I knew that it wouldn't be enough for you when you got there. And I couldn't bear the thought of you turning around and seeing that I wasn't what you wanted either. Oh, Carla, come on. Now, you know that I would never... <sighs> you know, I could have... I could have dealt with you seeing another woman better than this obsession with your career. And no, Jean, I never really had you. Carla, uh, don't go. Jean, I didn't say those things to be cruel. Please believe me. I do. You know, I don't think either of us ever gave up the hope of getting back together. I want to hold on to that dream, babe. But I can't if it means going back to the way things were. Please, don't make me do that. Becky, I don't think you're serious about cutting this album. How can you think that? Because of the irresponsible way you've handled this whole thing. David, I went to see a doctor. Come Martin. on. Martin. Martin. He's good for giving out band-aids and telling middle-aged ladies they're overweight. You should have gone to a specialist. No, well, I didn't think Bingo! That's... You didn't think. Becky, this is an amateur night at the lodge. I've been trying to get it through your thick head that you have signed a major recording contract to cut an album for national release. I know. I just... Oh, David, please, I was... don't even talk. Every time you open your mouth, it reminds me how much money I've thrown away on you. So is the recording section off? You expect me to spend $2,000 an hour for a studio full of musicians so you can do your imitation of Rod Serling in the Twilight Zone? Come on, David, come on. Don't be cruel, all right? 
I need your help. Angel, I've tried to help you. Every time I do, it's rust this and rust that, and I gotta get back to Kingsley. Quite frankly, that's pretty taxing on me. If you don't want what I've got to give, then let's call this whole thing off now and at least save some of my time and I money. I do want it. I... Please help me. I... I... You need a specialist. Okay. Well, not one from here. Fine. I got one in New York. Well, you know what's best, right? Go pack your bags. We'll try and catch a flight out of here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Diane Mead here, have you? No, I haven't. She's never on time. Well, you can uh, wait with me if you want. Well... <laughs> what am I, such bad company? <laughs> I guess not. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. <clears throat> you know what I mean. How's Becky's throat? No, oh, it's the same. You mean the medicine that Ben prescribed didn't help? No, not so far. You know, Ben really scared her yesterday. Not intentionally, I hope. No, I don't think so. But you know how high-strung Becky is. If she were to come across somebody with the same name in the obituary, she'd probably run right out and shoot herself. <laughs> you know, Ben didn't seem to think there was anything really wrong with her throat. Yeah, you should have heard Cohen on the subject of your husband's competency. Oh? Is this Cohen someone who would cause trouble? Mm-mm. But he likes to think that he is. Look up the word intimidation in the dictionary, you find his name right next to it. <laughs> I can just imagine how he made Becky feel. Yeah, not good. You know, I get the feeling that he treats all of his singers really badly. Whenever he puts his foot down, there's usually somebody standing underneath it. Why does Becky put up with all that? <laughs> In her words, it's the business. Mm. You drop some of them, you know. Phil, too? Oh, especially Phil. I know that Phil had a thing for Becky, but I don't think that she ever really took him really seriously. At least that would have put a little distance between her and Cohen. Oh, come on, Russ. From the way you say that he treats her, there can't possibly be anything no, there. Oh, I'm sure dropping someone was probably a pure professional move on his part. But it wasn't without personal motives either. Yeah, Vicki, you can put those other things aside. No, you can handle everything else now. Huh? Oh, I'm fine. I just don't think I'd be much use to anyone down there this afternoon. Okay. Thanks. Bye. How's the car, Mom? Oh, would you believe? It's all fixed. Ooh, that's real good news. Don't you use that tone with me. You don't believe any of it really happened, do you? Mom, you planned this whole afternoon and don't deny it. And don't try and convince me that you didn't know anything about Carla and I being alone for lunch. Oh, you got a suspicious mind, Gene. Oh, great. Well, what's that little verse in the Bible about uh, be as wise as a serpent yet innocent as a dove? If you and Carla ever get back together, it won't be by my hands, but by the Lord's. Oh, yeah, and you're, you're the Lord's servant, right? Gotta give him a little help. Gene, what's really wrong? Believe me, Mom, what you did was enough oh, to really what, set me what, off. Gene, I Mama! Carla said I... She said I never loved her. And what did you say? Well, what would I say? It wasn't true. I mean, how could she say that? 
It's, it's not true, Mom. Becky would never let someone like Cohen come between you two. Surprise. Ken, what are you doing here? Well, I was looking for you, of course. Anything wrong? I hope not. Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. Dave Cohen tells me the medication I prescribed for Becky didn't work. Yeah, well, you're not exactly on his list of top ten favorite doctors. I think I can live with a slight. He's a fun guy, isn't he? Every other inch a gentleman. <laughs> I like that. Good. Well, if uh, you're here and you've seen him, then that means he must be on his way back to torment my wife. Russ Weaver to the rescue. See you guys. See you. So long. I think we'll order later, thank you. There is something wrong, isn't there? I don't want to sound like a jealous husband or anything. I think we need to talk about how much time you're spending with Russ.